Let's talk about percents. Percents are super easy problems to work when you know how to work them. So what are percents? Percents are basically like a proportion. Okay, so we've worked proportion problems, but they compare values <clears throat> to 100. the number 100, like per, remember that word per from unit rates? We said that like if you were buying um, something in the grocery store and it was $1.99 per pound, remember how we talked about that is the word per? So per cent, cent means 100. Think about cents in a dollar. How many cents are there in a dollar? There are 100 cents, like pennies. Okay, or the word century. How many years are there in a century? There are 100 years in a century. So a per cent is like per 100, right? Okay, because that's kind of how we write that word per. So it's basically a proportion that we compare to 100. So remember when we talked about equivalent fractions on a previous vid video? Equivalent fractions, we talked about working, let's say you had, um, let's just talk about like a test score. When I used to teach high school, I would have maybe a test or a quiz, and I'd have a student who's made five out of eight um, questions correct. Say so they got five out of eight questions correct. And they'd say, you know, oh, so I only missed three problems, so I got a 70 so that we're, or a 97. And that's not how that works. So what we're doing with a percent is like making an equivalent fraction. Like if you have five correct, C for correct, out of eight total problems on your test. So if we want to make that a proportion and compare it to a total point of 100 because that's remember what our cents stands for is the 100. Then we want to know the percent, how many we got out of the 100. So we want to raise this fraction <clears throat> to an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 100. So I'm talking in terms of equivalent fractions here. And so if you followed me on that previous video, you remember you multiplied and you divided and you take your calculator and you just work that out. And what was your percentage? Well, if you made five out of eight, even though that sounds pretty good, you merely made a 62.5, which you could have rounded to a 63% on your test, which is really not that great, right? So when we're talking about percents, it's basically taking a part out of a whole or a total, which we call the base, and we compare it to a 100 value, okay? So we're gonna make a proportion. Now, as you're preparing for your GED or your high set math test, we're just gonna stick with working percents like a proportion. So there's more than one way to work it, and um, not any one way is the only way, but we're gonna start we're gonna work them as if they were proportions. So let's get a note card out and write this down. So our formula, well, we'll just say that they are comparing a uh, value to 100. So that's what it means, because it's per 100, okay? And we're gonna work them as proportion problems. Proportions are so easy, right? And so our formula is going to be the part over the base equals the rate over 100. And so that 100 will always be in our formula. Now the part is the portion of the total. So, for example, if you're going to lunch and you have a, you're sitting at a table and you have a bill, 
if you leave a tip, a tip would be the part, okay? And the base, the whole amount, would be like your bill, okay? The bill at the restaurant. Now, the rate is always the percent. Because remember, a rate is a like a ratio, all right? So that over 100 makes the percent. So anytime you have the percent sign given to you in the problem, that's the rate. And we won't include the percent sign on the formula when we work it. When, um, if you were, remember f math from school, we talked about this formula is over of equals percent over 100. So part represents the is. A lot of times the word, the wording can tell you what you're looking for. So if I say uh, $5 is 10% of my bill, Okay, so $5 is the part, it would go right here. 10% is the percent, because you have the percent sign, it's a dead giveaway, so 10 would go here, of my bill, so of my bill would go down here, and if you don't know it, that would be the X. So the of is the base, or the whole amount, and of course the percent is the rate. <clears throat> so we need to write this down on our note card and then we're going to write down some steps on how to work these and then in the next video i'm going to work some with you or set some up with you and then we're going to start working some problems okay so <clears throat> let's do some steps on how do we set this up okay percent problem steps I like to put this on a note card. I would encourage you to do that so that you can have a, a quick guide to refer to instead of having to flip through pages and that kind of thing. Steps. Number one, of course, you're going to read the problem. I know that's a no-brainer, but you're still going to do that. Now, you're going to make a list, and it's going to look like this. P equals B equals R equals. So once you've read it and you decide, oh, this is percent, I want you to write PBR. PBR can stand for a, an acronym in your head is like, I think of professional bull riding, but you could call it, well, I don't know, peanut butter and raspberry, whatever. Whatever helps you remember those letters. You're going to make a list, and then you're going to <clears throat> fill in your list with what you have from the problem. So on our previous problem, we said $5 is 10% of my bill. So I would have put $5 here, I would have put 10% in here, and then I would have left that B blank. So we wanna fill in our list, and then we wanna write our formula. And your formula is going to be part over base equals percent or rate over 100. Yes, and I know, I just want you to write your formula enough times so that you remember it when you see a problem and you won't ever forget it. And then we're going to rewrite our formula with the substituted values. Substitute did values mm. okay so for example with our problem from our lunch we would have written line equals line over 100 we would have taken the part out because we said the word part and we would put our five dollars in base we didn't know so we would have put an x rate we said was 10 percent we leave the percent sign off because now it's over 100 and then we would solve it and remember to solve this, we're gonna draw our arrow, go back and watch the video on proportions. Draw arrow, which represents to multiply, and circle, which represents to divide. So you would do like this. And then I'm gonna ask that you go ahead and write it like this so that 
you know what you're doing and then you can just plug that directly into the calculator one more note before we start working some problems i want you to remember that the percent sign is a code so when you see um, a number that's 10 percent this is this percent sign is a math code and that math code means that that 10 should really be over the number 100. Any number you have, even if it was bigger, say you had a 150%. Well, this percent sign is code to take the 150 and put it as a fraction over the number 100. The bottom number always stays as 100. And then you can take this to your calculator. I also want to show you this too. So let's say you have 10%, so you put it in your calculator, 10, and then the percent is right here above the percent, the uh, parentheses sign. So you say second, open parentheses, hit enter, and it will take your percent and change it to a decimal. If you double arrow it, it'll take it to a fraction. So these buttons right here, you see the green, percent and change to percent, will be working with some of those as, as we do some problems. But you need to understand that this percent sign is code for putting the number, whatever the number is, could be a decimal, could be a fraction, still put it over 100.